Okay. Well, welcome everybody to the Rye Town Council meeting of February 16th, 2021. Please uh, join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for 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 the Thank you. That was great. That, no, that was, that was that was not very well done at all. I know. I know. Uh, we're gonna have to practice like the Rockettes do it <laughs> in unison. Uh, uh, at this point, um, uh, I'm going to uh, call the roll. Actually, I'll note because we're on Zoom that all members are present and accounted for. So we have a full, uh, a full uh, council this evening. At this time, uh, I wanna announce publicly the passing of our uh, longtime uh, carekeeper, uh, George Hogman. Uh, George said carekeeper, um, that's not quite, he's, He's the caretaker. Caretaker, caretaker for the town of Rye. George uh, performed a great service for us. He lived at Crawford Park and his responsibilities included checking each and every one of the town facilities every night. Rain or shine, snow, whatever the weather, and every night he sent the council and Debbie a report of the condition of, for example, the fields, whether they were occupied, who was there. And he was really, really diligent. George stood about six feet eight, very large person. He had a very large heart. He was soft-spoken. Uh, and his heart was soft as well. He did whatever you asked him to do, never complained. And he will be, he will be missed. Um, does anybody else want to say something? If not, I'd like to take a moment of silence in his memory, memory of George. Thank you, everybody. And may his memory be a blessing. Amen. 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 Um, our first, thank you all. Our first item of business is adoption of the minutes uh, from uh, January 19th. Uh, if there are no objections, corrections, may I have a motion and a second? I'll move. second. Thank you, Jill. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. The first resolution, if you noticed in earlier agenda, I uh, moved this one up. We have James Natarelli with us. James, are you on the phone? I'm oh, here. There he, is. <laughs> there he is in person. Oh my God. It looks like you're in the office. I am. Oh, now that is, that is a conscientious man. <laughs> Uh, the first resolution is declaring an emergency regarding the Creek Bridge uh, wing walls. Uh, James or Debbie, do you want to just take us through a quick background of what happened? Uh, you want to do it, James? Sure. Um, so when I was last before you, uh, I think it was middle of December, um, we discussed the, the wing walls and the southbound approach. We didn't, to the have, south. we didn't have a December meeting. It was it been January, January or November. I don't know. Okay. I don't, either way, you okay. were before us and. Um, and we discussed the, the southbound approach to the, to the, um, to the South Barry uh, Avenue Bridge over Otter Creek. And our plan to install 
a supportive excavation or SOE to stabilize the walls. Um, and the SOE that, that I discussed was to consist of driven micropiles with lateral timber lagging uh, to span them. And since then, uh, topographic and boundary survey has been completed, um, which is to be used to, to design the SOE. Um, however, a couple of weeks ago, it was noticed that one of the boulders had fallen uh, from one of the wing walls. And um, should I share my screen and, and show a, a picture of it? Or has the council seen the, the photos? Absolutely. Please do share your screen. The, the, Enable, would you uh, please enable that? Yes. Thank you. The, the, public, the public hasn't seen it. The council has seen pictures. OK. Um, so just to get your bearings, this is uh, an aerial of the, of the bridge. These red lines represent the, the wing walls that, are, that we're talking about tonight. Um, and these are the photos that we received on Friday, February 5th uh, of the wing walls. This, this wing wall is the inland side um, of the, the southbound approach. Um, and you can notice a, a void here. This is where a rock has fallen from the, from the top of the wall and down towards the water. Here's a shot from the Yacht Club side of the bridge looking north. Um, and this is uh, on the right hand, the right hand picture is just another shot from above of, of a different part of the, the same wall. Um, so, I mean, it's clear this is a, an extremely hazardous condition. Um, if the conditions were to be dry, then limited traffic one way at a time in a lane that's as narrow as possible, 10 to 12 feet wide in the middle of the road bridge, uh, that can be permitted. However, once the weather conditions change and it gets even wetter, uh, the wall may re react in ways that cannot be predicted uh, and the road will need to be closed at that time. So we're recommending that the design and implementation of the SOE be accelerated. Um, we requested and received a proposal from the geotechnical engineer to design the SOE. Um, this is the same engineer that oversaw the soil borings and prepared the geotech report. So he's familiar with the project. Um, our office will coordinate with the geotech engineer to prepare the design. And once it's completed, we're recommending that the town request at least three bids from contractors uh, to install the SOE as soon as possible. All right, thank you. Uh, the resolution immediately before the council is to declare an emergency. Um, and uh, this is, certainly an emergency condition right now. And what declaring an emergency does is it enables us to circumvent the normal bidding procedures uh, when a proposed construction would exceed $35,000, we need to go out for a, a public bidding through um, uh, you know, advertising in the newspapers, et cetera. And that could take, uh, by the time the, the specifications are completed, it's advertised, a bid is awarded, it could take at least a month or two months. So what this enables us to do is to do the work more quickly. As James just alluded to, uh, we will still get a minimum of three bids, three competitive bids, from three responsible contractors. Uh, but this way we will be able to complete this basic work uh, with a, 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 in a minimum of time. So this is the first step is to declare the emergency pursuant to the resolution that is before the council. Um, Debbie, I don't think we need to share the screen at this point. Thank you. Um, so with that, first, may I have a motion and a second? I'll make the motion. A second. Okay. Is there any further discussion on the declaration of emergency? I, I guess my question is, and sorry, you explained that it is a truncated time for repairs under the declaration of emergency. Um, mine is more focused on the bridge, but I guess that'll come later. The bridge itself as opposed to the wing walls? Or, well, I guess more so in light of, you know, the impending storm or the forecast storm that's coming on Thursday. Is there anything, any additional measures we need to be taking or? 
not not that I know of, but but James and Vic may have other ideas, uh, and uh, we'll let's get to that afterwards. Uh, we have a motion and a second. If there's no further discussion, uh, can we call the roll, please? Councilperson Jill Axloth. Yes. Councilperson <laughs> Lindsay Jackson. Yes. Councilperson Pamela Jaffe. Yes. Councilperson Thomas Nardi. Yes. And Supervisor Gary Zuckerman. Yes, thank you. The next resolution is a resolution to engage Down to Earth Construction. What a great name. Oh. Uh, to perform the, um, I don't know, uh, to perform the design work for the work that just, that uh, James just described. Uh, the the uh, draft proposed a uh, draft proposal is before the uh, council, and basically what we're committing to at this time is uh, design in the amount of forty five hundred dollars, and um, a review and coordination sum, a lump sum of eight hundred and fifty dollars which I think would come at the end of the contract. Is that, is that correct, James? Yeah, I, that, I, right. That line item um, is for when a, a contractor is brought on board, they'll submit shop drawings or you know plans or on how they want to do things, what materials they want to use. So that, that amount is for down to earth services and reviewing those submittals. All right, thank you. In addition, there's construction services, field observation and documentation and the special inspection report thereafter. And the field observation and documentation is on an hourly basis, but our resolution limits that to a total of $15,000. Uh, the charge is $1,000 per visit, eight hours or, or, uh, or less, and $650, four hours or less. So, if they, they work for four weeks, 20 days, that could be up to $20,000 if they did a full eight hour day, but we're limiting it under the resolution to a total of $15,000. And if more is required, they have to come back to the council. So that's what uh, this contract is about. And after the, I'll talk a little bit about, more about the bridge after the, um, we-, we Motion, please. Motion. I'll make a motion. Second. I'll second it. Thank you. If there's no further discussion, uh, please call the roll. Councilperson Axelrod. Yes. Councilperson Jackson. Yes. Councilperson Jaffe. Yes. Councilperson Nardi. Yes. And Supervisor Zuckerman. Yes. <coughs> Before we go on to the next item, let me just backtrack. Um, and I don't remember if it was uh, January or November. Uh, could have been December, actually. Uh, that's right. We didn't have a commission meeting, but we did have a town meeting. Uh, could have been in, in December, where some of the residents from the Rye Neck section, Shore Acres, uh, came and observed, and we had discussed this. The ultimate plan uh, for the bridge is to get a full engineering report and submit it for either major rehabilitation or for a new bridge under the Bridge New York program, which if we are approved, will pay for 90% of the cost of construction and the soft costs. Am I correct, Debbie? Is it 90 or 95%? It was a big amount. I believe it's 90%. 90%. We are, we, we are working with Bridge New York now uh, on the, um, what's the name of it? Why can't I remember that? The Hillside Avenue Bridge. Hillside, the Hillside Avenue Bridge, um, which we are working with the town of Mamaric, the village of Mamaric, and ourselves to do a complete reconstruction of that bridge. Uh, we don't know if a complete reconstruction is necessary um, I've spoken, of course, to James and Dolph Rothfeld, and um, 
the uh, the way it's determined is whether or not a needed renovation will be more than 50% of the cost of a new bridge. Um, the state will award a, you know, the money for a new bridge if we're approved, if the cost of renovation would be more than 50% of that cost. Am I correct, James? Yes. Thank more you. Less. More or less. Okay. I know that there are wrinkles. So anyway, we know that the bridge is, is in okay condition, but the question is how much okay condition it is. And if we do uh, get a bridge in New York grant, part of that will be totally new wing walls with a different type of construction, um, probably of concrete, I believe. Am I correct with that, James? As an overview? Yeah, typically that's what we would recommend. Yeah, and, okay. uh, yeah, right. A slightly different configuration too for the wing walls. Right. One thing I so think it's, it's worth pointing out is that even if it is a concrete wing wall, um, we can still put the stone facing back up so that the the bridge retains the charm that the neighbors are so fond of. That is correct. So, um, but that is in the future. That is not now. Right now, we're dealing with uh, the wing wall construct. First of all, the wing wall design, and then it'll go out for um, for bidding. Uh, so that that's what we have it. Any questions about that, Lindsay? Nope, that sounds fantastic. <laughs> okay, <laughs> I, I'm an expert on wing walls. I agree 100. <laughs> percent Thank you. No, all the engineering terminology got it. All right. I'm an expert on big nuts. <laughs> I was going to say, uh, I was going to say wing ding. <laughs> so, all right, that's fine. I just wanted everybody to be apprised of it. We're public, so, so the public knows about it. And that's the direction that we're headed. But right now, uh, we've approved the design and we're going to go forward with that. Uh, all right, thank you for all of that. And now, um, we have Pam Jaffe. Hello, Gary. Um, I go to you on Dan Scammer and to Hannah Adler. Yes. You want to go forward, Pam? Tell us what this is about. Thank you. Um, several months back, actually, uh, Supervisor Zuckerman received a letter. Um, from local activists asking for the town council to take a position on the Dan Scammer project. Now, we weren't really aware of what the Dan Scammer project was at the time. Um, so luckily we have a fabulous intern who has spent a very good amount of time learning about Dan Scammer and learning about what is going on there. She brought in Santosh Nandalaban from the Food and Water Watch to talk to the Sustainability Committee. And the reason we're talking to everybody tonight about Dan Scammer is twofold. One is the mandate of the Sustainability Committee is to inform the community to issues relating to the environment that they may not be aware of and to recommend um, a course of action um, you know, so that's important. Sorry, I'm just losing it right now, but you know, it's an important component of what we're doing, but also to make everyone in the township aware that Governor Cuomo does have very aggressive um, sustainable energy goals for the electric grid. And by 2030, um, he would like 70% renewable energy. So what's going on with the Dan Scammer plant upriver of us, very upriver of us, is going to set those goals back as well as have health concerns downriver here. So I'm gonna give it over to Hannah who is much more well versed in this than I am. She's gonna read a letter that's been prepared by the Sustainability Committee to send to our state representatives and to local media, hopefully to run those op-eds from the Sustainability Committee, just so the community understands what is going on and what our recommendation would be. So over to you, Hannah. Thank you, Pamela, and thank you everyone for having me. Um, I'm gonna get started on the letter. Um, so, dear Supervisor Zuckerman and Town of Rye Council, 
One of the core tenets of the Rye Town of Rye Sustainability Committee mission is to educate and inform local residents about issues of environmental concern and to develop policies that will help our community adopt more sustainable practices. As such, the committee has been researching the proposed expansion of the Dance Gamer Power Plant, a fracked gas power plant on the Hudson River in Newburgh, and we find the proposed expansion to be troubling on several, several fronts with health and quality of life impact here in the town of Rye. The owner of the Dance Gamer Power Plant proposes replacing the current facility, which operates less than 5% of the time, with one that will run virtually nonstop. This proposal runs directly counter to Governor Cuomo's Climate Leadership and Community Protection Act, also known as CLCPA, which mandates that the New York achieve a mandated goal of zero emissions electricity sector by 2040, including a goal of 70% renewable energy generation by 2030. The current Dan Scammer proposal is to build a new replacement power plant that would increase New York State's reliance on fossil fuels. In a resolution sponsored by County Legislator Catherine Parker of Rye, passed on February 8th, 2021, the county, the county posited that the plant's expansion would add 2 million tons of greenhouse gas emissions annually to our atmosphere, drastically harming air quality in the region and exacerbating climate change. There would be a significant threat to the water and air quality for all of us downstream on the Hudson. The Sustainability Committee supports the state's CLCPA goals and stands in support with the county legislation in regards to Dance Gamer. While Dance Gamer leadership claims this project will supply much needed capacity to the New York independent system operator grid at lower prices, while being more fuel efficient than current energy supplies, it does so at the expense of renewable energy opportunities. Moreover, the NISO 2017 assessment found that the, shuttering of it, the shutting of Indian Point could jeopardize the reliability of the existing system if sufficient replacement sources of power were not added. Subsequent studies provide ample evidence that the rate at which renewable sources of electricity generation are coming online are likely to put New York on a path to meet its grid demands without bringing on new fossil fuel based sources of electricity generation. Consumer facing marketing from the plant operators is misleading and the town residents should know that Dance Gamer Energy's claim that this project will be a bridge for New York to meet its renewable energy goals doesn't take into account green climate friendly technology that better aligns with New York's renewable energy leadership position. Also, it is important for the community to understand that while Dance Gamer Energy couches this project in positive economic terms, terms citing an increase in jobs to the region, it is at the expense of promising green energy jobs that may be rendered obsolete by the plant's expansion. It is within reach for New York and local Westchester County to achieve a robust renewable economy without dependence on fossil fuels, fracked gas plants, and non-sustainable energy practices. The Town of Rye Sustainability Committee states our opposition to the Dan Scammer Energy Project and urges the Rye Town Council and other local and state officials to stand against this project. Regards, the Town of Rye Sustainability Committee. Thank you. Hannah, thank you. That was a oh, great, good. very good, Hannah. very well done. Thank you to Hannah, to James Ward, and to Carmen Santos, who are our, our Dance Camera subcommittee and really work to bring us knowledge of the situation. So I would like to propose, since the county just passed, you know, passed the resolution last week, sponsored by legislator um, Catherine Parker, that next month we take into consideration a resolution of our own. I think that, so, that if the council agrees preliminarily because we don't have it before us, uh, I would suggest that we place it on the agenda and you work with, um, with Jeff to, to draft such a resolution, um, uh, making it specific to the town of Rye as well as the county of Westchester. And I think we can all agree that uh, that this should go forward. Um, uh, May I suggest that Hannah, as our intern, work with Jeff on uh, drafting that resolution? 
Well, I would suggest that that, that would be appropriate. I was going to suggest that possibly Pam would assign Hannah to do that. Uh, so, Hannah to do that, yes. <laughs> um, do that. And, and uh, uh, I would also suggest as backup material that you also include uh, more than just this letter, the backup and the reasons why the county legislature passed this and you know any backup materials that we can make a, a part of the record. I have a couple of um, copies of other local municipality resolutions from uh, Sunrise Westchester, which is another environmental organization, organization I'm a part of. So I'd be happy to base the sure. resolution off of those as well. Work, work, work with Jeff on that. And I would suggest strongly that, as I say, as part of the record, we have backup materials uh, to support mm -hmm. the, uh, the position that we're gonna be taking. Okay. Okay. Thank, Thank you so Thank much. You. Thank you. Hannah. You did Thank a great job. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And you, you, you can nice leave, job. but you're you're welcome to stay the whole meeting if you like. <laughs> I think I'm going to go have dinner, but thank you for your time. Uh, dinner. <laughs> dinner. <laughs> wow. That was great. <laughs> All right. Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. She's wonderful. She's going to be going to Tufts in the autumn for environmental engineering. That's so. great. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, next resolution is approving the capital expenditures for Crawford Park in the amount of $60,000 plus. Uh, I don't need that. This is a. Um, this is a list of proposed expenditures. Uh, Debbie has reviewed this. Obviously, this comes mostly from Vic and um, working with Debbie. And uh, uh, of course, Davey, as our controller, is aware of the capital expenditures. Uh, and why don't you tell us about it? Because I'm actually very proud of the list that you put together. Debbie or Vic, you want to talk about <laughs> I think I'm happy to uh, to uh, have you speak, or I'm, I can do it. Um, Deb, give me a couple of. You can start. I'll I'll chime in. Uh, okay. Getting back into my car to take my grandson home now. Okay. <laughs> okay, that's an important job. <laughs> yes, it is. That <laughs> is. I would say the the lion's share of these capital purchases are the. Um, the, the icing on the cake of a research project and policy initiative that has been ongoing for about six months or more um, to bring the town of Rye and Crawford Park specifically into um, green landscape care. Um, and this is in support of our sustainability initiative as well. So the purchases are for um, uh, an electric gator, which is a uh, replacement of a, um, um, a very old um, uh, gas, gas uh, driven vehicle. Uh, we have researched um, several lawn mowers. Um, we've uh, did uh, Vic conducted um, product comparisons. Um, of uh, 60 inch mowers and 30 inch mowers and electric greenworks backpack units and weed whackers. So we are, this is part of our initiative to bring landscape care um, back in house. We are no longer going to be outsourcing our landscaping for Crawford Park um, and we are going green. So that's the major part of these purchases. Um, in addition, um, we are at long last mothballing our extremely heavy and rusty picnic tables in favor of um, very efficient collab uh, uh, picnic tables that are not only strong, but fold up and are also ADA accessible. I'm very proud of this initiative. And um, lastly, we're, we're getting lockable storage cages uh, for the basement 
mm-hmm. of uh, Crawford Mansion Community Center. We currently have about a half a dozen um, just such models that have been extremely effective for us, both in terms of storing uh, town uh, materials, but also um, uh, renters who use uh, Crawford um, have um, literally, uh, if they want to store things, they can rent those cages. And so they, they will earn revenue as well. Yes, actually, the, the Friends, um, the Sunday School, and our art class have rented the cages already. Um, In other words, the, the cages that we're buying have already been spoken for and are going to yeah. start to pay for themselves? Yes. Some of them, yes. Nice. Good. Good. Excellent. Good um, work. What I, what I particularly love is um, furniture that can adjust, that can move and transform. What's wonderful about this is we have storage that literally can roll around the floor to accommodate what we need in terms of space. And we are very efficient with how we can store things. And the, and the tables, the picnic tables fold up to four inches wide. When, so it's easy to, easy to store and move them. Excellent. I'm, I'm Vic, just look, oh. Great job. Great job, Vic. Vic, I have a quick Lindsay. question. Oh, sorry. Lindsay, right you're recognized. Oh, sorry. I just wanted to ask when you did, because it looks like you did extensive research on each piece of equipment. Did you take a look at OGS's um, green sort of yes. um, we, we absolutely did in fact what Vic discovered is of all the pro- of all of the products on the OGS site none of them are commercial grade landscaping equipment wow wow no I I mean as long as you looked at it I'd rather us get something that's going to last and is good rather than going with something because it's OGS so and yeah. this, is, this is all government contract so it, yeah, doesn't, it is. doesn't have to be bid. Uh, this is on the official contracts list. And I do love the fact that we've seen videos of Debbie riding green mowers around the park. That's always fun. <laughs> but, you know, the, the, the renewable fleet, the green energy fleet is actually very important to the work we're doing with Sylvie um, on our Tree City mm-hmm. certification, our clean energy um, community certification and eventually our climate smart community certification, they all cascade and this is a really integral part of it. So Vic has done a lot of research here to bring us into a green future. No, I think this is I think this is wonderful. The fact that it's sustainable to the um, you know the 21st century goes along with what we just discussed about dance camera and the entire sustainable uh, initiative that the town is making, uh, and thanks to you, Pam, for leading it. Much appreciated. I have to give Debbie equal props. She's basically holding hands and is as much of a leader as anybody I know on this front. So very Thank lucky you. to be working with Debbie. It's very gracious. It's been my honor. Very happy to spread spread the praise. Um, all right. May I have a well, uh, if we're if we're spreading the praise, then then I have to uh, give credit to Candy Maya, who has been uh, working uh, with Vic every step of the way. She actually has training as an electrical engineer, so when she's when they were looking into literally kicking tires and comparing products and different uh, different brands, um, she was she did the heavy lifting. That's she did great. a lot of lead work. She really did. Candy was tremendous. She is tremendous. Yes. Excellent. Thank you. Spreading the praise. Very good. I think that's terrific. Um, we need a motion and a second, please. So moved. I'll second. Hope, please call the roll. Councilperson Axelrod. Yes. Councilperson Jackson? Yes. Councilperson Jaffe? Yes. Councilperson Nardi? Yes. And Supervisor Zuckerman? Yes. Thank you. Moving on to the uh, Crawford Park uh, and 
community center rental rates. Um, I think Camille, this is something that you have worked extremely hard on and please tell us about it. Okay, well, when we, when I had done the year end analysis um, of rentals, rental revenue versus what our labor costs were, um, it was pretty clear that we needed to make some adjustments so that we at the very least would break even across the board. Um, so I had done quite a bit of analysis in terms of what we're charging, what our um, comparable venues around the community were charging. Um, and, and we were on the low, definitely on the low side. Um, so I actually went through and did an analysis on different rentals that we did and what it would cost us with new rates with two attendants, three attendants, four attendants, see what was our breaking point. So long story short, um, we are looking at uh, an increase in rates for uh, the residents of the town of Rye of 30%. Uh, we will look at an increase uh, for non-residents. Again, last year we had a 30% premium uh, for the non-residents, so we're going to carry that forward uh, with the new rates we have for the residents. Uh, we're going to make a slight change in our rates for nonprofit organizations. We um, were offering them a 50% discount off of our rates. What I'm recommending now is that we give them a 25% discount. So they're still getting um, a better price, yet we are not going to lose money on the majority of their rentals. Um, it also depends on whether people are renting the great hall, the pavilion, or the second floor rooms. Very big difference in the rates there. So we have to be very aware that when we rent second floor, we're not as profitable as when we rent the first floor. That said, hopefully the increases which we're recommending will balance it out so that at the end of the, at the, end of the day, we will have revenue to show for um, all the rentals that we have. So my recommendation at this point is to um, increase the residents 30% from last year's resident rate, increase the non-resident 30% of the new resident rate and reduce the nonprofit by 25%. Additionally, okay. go ahead, question. Yeah, I was just gonna say there's a <clears throat> complete listing of the rates that are attached to the, uh, to the resolution. Yes, page 46. <laughs> Page 46 has it. Um, I don't know, Neva, can you um, pull that up? I'm not able to do it on my laptop here. Thank you, Debbie. You're welcome. Okay. So we've, I've listed the four categories um, of renters or patrons that we have right now. We've broken it out, indoor space, outdoor space, Additionally, we've added some new rental spaces and I'll go through those in a moment, but I think the biggest change here is that we are no longer going to offer packages because the feedback we received from many of our patrons is that the packages lock them into a particular time frame. Um, so what I'm proposing is every rental space we have, we create an hourly rate and then everything is um, based on that hourly rate per space. Any questions so far? Okay. Um, some of the new spaces, and I'll just do this very briefly, some of the new spaces we're offering based on patron requests and other needs that we've seen um, we are going to be offering on the main floor um, the solarium and terrace as one rental space, which has been wonderful during COVID because people <coughs> feel like they're outside when we open everything in the solarium, when we open all the windows, the doors, 
and they can go right out onto the terrace. So that has been a very wonderful space. Uh, that's also used in conjunction with the sunken garden where we've had a number of weddings uh, because again, COVID, everyone needed to be out and wanted to be outside. Um, <clears throat> we are also making it possible for people to rent the entire second floor. Um, two weeks ago, we had a bar mitzvah or bat mitzvah rather on the second floor. They actually used the community meeting room for the service. Um, it was very interesting, but it worked out very well. Um, on the outside, let's see, what's new there? Well, I already talked about the sunken garden, but another outdoor space that um, we've developed due to COVID is we are now making available renting of the mansion circle and the great lawn in front of it. We've had a number of events out there, um, graduation ceremony, we've had um, birthday parties where they've done scavenger hunts on the great lawn and they had their celebration in the circle itself. Um, so we're really finding new uses for a lot of our spaces. We have also uh, developed uh, some additional revenue streams and I listed some of the services here um, and a lot of it is based out of need and again uh, the fact that we we need to bring in additional staff at certain times and we don't want to um, basically fall short of the revenue because of it. So when there's a large group, say 75 people or more, we're going to have to bring in parking attendants. An example of that was we had uh, soccer, huge, huge soccer um, events, practices, all uh, late summer long. And the traffic was so unbelievable that we had to actually bring in some of our park attendants to direct the traffic and move the cars. So that's one example of why we're adding that there. Um, a park attendant, basically, if we need to have additional people uh, at the request of the patron, no problem, we will bring them in on an hourly basis. Um, we have gotten a lot of requests by patrons to come in prior to their event. For example, this weekend we have an, a party in the mansion in the Great Hall and the patron has requested to come in three hours early to decorate. So in a package situation, basically they wouldn't be paying for that. Um, but with our new structure, we are going to allow them of course to come in early but we're not gonna charge the full hourly rate. There is a non-event rate. So if people wanna come in the day before, the morning of, it will be $150 per hour. And that these, these service rates are going to be flat across all patron categories. Um, the tent and inflatable placement, we've ha we have had that uh, $200 per placement. Security personnel, we've been doing that all along when we have alcohol being served. And um, another, I guess, think resolution that's coming up uh, next on the agenda is uh, we are now able to offer audio visual uh, an engineer on site during an event, which we have already used once for that bar mitzvah. It worked out beautifully. So that's where we are right now. Um, those are my recommendations. Um, any questions, any thoughts, any concerns? Camille, let me just say a couple of things. Number one, I think you did a great job on this. Thank you. I think, I think you put in an extraordinary amount of work, an extraordinary amount of thinking behind it. And we have... Debbie and I, Camille, have discussed periodically where we're going with this. Um, the one thing that I wanted to make sure of is that we were charging reasonable rates. And I know that some members of the council, and I'm, I'm especially Tommy, because you and I have, have discussed this um, periodically. We want to make sure that the people of the town of Rye can rent the facility. We wanna make sure that we're not overpricing. We, we, we don't wanna lose money, but on the other hand, 
Um, we want to make it reasonable so that the residents of the town can avail themselves of this beautiful new facility. Uh, on the other hand, we don't want to make it so inexpensive that we lose money uh, and that we have people waiting outside the door to, to come because it, the demand would be so great that because the prices are so low. So we want to strike a balance between you know, what is too low and what is too high. And I think Camille has really, really attempted to do that. Uh, she started out and kind of glossed over the fact that she looked at other venues, other private venues, other public venues. You know, I don't think that anything approaches what we have as a town facility. It's unique. But there are other facilities that, you know, public facilities that get rented out. And so she took that and, and ran with it. Um, and whether these rates are the proper rates will only be determined when they're in effect. We've had a past year of uh, terrible. Well, it's been terrible for everybody about everything, but especially for, for public events. People haven't been able to gather. We haven't had to be able to have 100 people weddings and things like that. You know, we've been limited for the most part to about 25. So, uh, you know, we'll wait and see. And I, you know, so I, I highly recommend we go forward with this um, and we will revisit it when it's appropriate to revisit, whether it's in the middle of the summer or at the end of the year. Uh, We'll, we'll take a look at it and um, and see how we're doing. So that's what I have to say. Thank you. Has Anybody there, else? Yeah, I have a quick question. Has there been any communication with the community groups that regularly use the facility about the increased price? Um, what type of, is there a particular Group like, talking about? I would assume Porchester Council for the Arts or <laughs> again. Community. No, there haven't. There haven't. Lindsay, the Porchester Council for the Arts hasn't used our facility in a couple of years at this point. I wish it were otherwise, but yeah. they haven't been back. Um, I, I would think that CJEG, have you discussed that uh, the rates will be going up next year for with CJEG? No, I haven't, because they haven't really used our facility yet. They're coming right. back in March, which is wonderful, um, but there really is only going to be two and a half months left to their year. Mm -hmm. if they do, if they are able to come back on Mar in March first, so we'll keep our fingers crossed. And the people waiting, uh, the people waiting that you mentioned earlier, mm -hmm. they're aware of the rate structure, the potential. Yes, they know that's why they're waiting. <laughs> that we, um, some of them that were really in a bind time-wise, I shared with them what the proposed pricing was with the stipulation that it had to be approved by the council and they could change, they may not, we would work with them either way. Um, but we have about 12 contracts waiting right now for events. All right, that's very good. Yeah. All right, thank you. Any Anything else? Anybody else? Those, those 12 contractors, how many, what's the percentage of those being nonprofits? None. None. Okay. None. And no municipal either in the particular ones that I have waiting. Okay. So we haven't had any, in, in fact, when I take you through the, the quick revenue report, um, nonprofits have not been using Crawford at all, um, mainly because they're either meeting via Zoom mm -hmm. or they don't want to be inside. We have the Italian American uh, Heritage Club yeah. hoping to start uh, the end of the month to have their first in-person meeting, but okay. that's still pending. Mm -hmm. and don't we have, Camille, don't we have uh, Ronald McDonald House set for the for October? Uh, September, yes, we do. Yes, that's the 400 people <laughs> event. Yes, that, that's a non for profit. Yeah, yeah. We, they don't, um, their rate structure, <laughs> though, I think is going to be different based on what has happened in the past. 
Um, I'm actually in the process of researching that with Brenda right now um, because there, was, there wasn't, um, the rate they were charged didn't fit into any prior category that we had. So I wanted to make sure we were doing the right thing with them. So that is not one of the ones pending at the moment, but <coughs> will definitely be on the discussion at the discussion table soon. All right, great, so, thank you. So, it, so there's, there's, there's no more packages, everything's strictly by the hour. Yeah. And is everything allocated with the hourly, because as you know, I've been sick the last week and yeah. a half. So I didn't get a chance to really look. That's okay. Um, but is everything a la carte or during those packages, are they, I mean, with those hourly rates, are they getting tables and chairs and stuff Absolutely. like that? Absolutely. Thank you for bringing that up because that, that's a pretty important piece of the puzzle I neglected to tell you about. Um, so with the mansion rentals, whether you have the great hall, the second floor or one room, here is what is included in the hourly rate. Uh, you will get standard 60 inch round tables and folding chairs. We also now have an additional mm -hmm. opportunity for revenue with upgraded uh, chairs, tables, and things like that, which will also be uh, offered to the patron. Um, it includes Crawford staff to set up the tables, the chairs, assist during the event, maintain a clean event space, <coughs> remove all garbage, maintain clean bath, clean and sterilized bathrooms or sanitized bathrooms during the event. And they will also clean up after the event, taking care of all of our equipment. Um, the, the patron will be getting one complimentary hour prior to set up to any of their events. I mean, I, you have to yeah. give them some time to come yeah. in and get ready. Yeah, you do, you, you gotta know? give them time to set up. Absolutely. Um, so, you know, I think, I think we're being pretty fair there. And of course, they're going to have at least an hour after the event, after the event. And that's fine too. Yes. Um, when you have, when you rent the great hall, it includes the use of all the patios and surrounding lawn, lawn areas surrounding the mansion. So you have the <laughs> circle in the front, you have the portico yeah. on the side and the portico in the back as well. Okay. Um, we're also including the use of the, of the kitchen because everybody needs the kitchen, regardless yes. of what they're doing. So the kitchen is included with that. And that's basically a staging kitchen uh, yep. with the, the counters, the fridge, the freezer, everything with the exception of the oven and the stove yes. and the dishwashers, because that you would have to have a, a licensed caterer. Yep. Um, and complimentary Wi-Fi, which believe it or not, not every venue has. Right. So that's, for the indoor spaces. For outside, you're getting your standard, standard brand new picnic tables and benches. Uh, again, the same staff requirements uh, that we have offered for the mansion. They get the same complimentary hour for setup. And they also have use of the uh, pavilion service kitchen. Mm -hmm. And it's the ice machine, the fridge, all of the equipment we have in there and complimentary Wi-Fi. Mm -hmm. so, you know, I, I feel like we're offering, we may be increasing the rates, but um, I think they're, they're getting a reasonable amount of services mm -hmm. and equipment yeah. um, for their rate. <coughs> Excuse me. With, with the pavilion, with, this, with the kitchen, are they allowed to use the stove and the convection oven or it's just the convection oven? You know, I, I don't have an answer for that. I haven't really given it thought. I'm open to recommendations. I mean, I know in the mansion kitchen, we prefer, and we've told people that, no, they can't heat anything up. I think that's sort of a right. risk. And we probably should have the same policy. I, in, I, in the, I was, I was going to say, if you're going to have that for the mansion, you should have it for the pavilion. Okay, thank you. All right. Agreed. Agreed and noted. Thank you. Thank you. I okay. Just, oh, sorry. Uh, just wanted to uh, um, note that if you go into the mansion, Camille's done a beautiful job of doing a few setups so people can see, you know, what the table settings would be, what an upgraded table setting is. It is very, very professional. It's lovely. Thank you. You've done a ton of research to make us comparably priced to other venues in the area. And also, if I'm not wrong, we were so affordably priced half the time we were taking a loss on staffing. So, yeah. you know, thank you for actually balancing out part of the town budget in all of your work. My pleasure. Glad to do it. Fantastic job. 
Okay, I'll let you move on now. All right. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. You need, you need a motion and a second. So moved. I'll make the motion. I'll second. Thank Tommy. you, Tony. Thank you, Pam. Uh, please call the roll. Thank you, Hope. Hope, you're Hope. on mute. <laughs> you're on mute. <laughs> Thank you, I know. Councilperson Axelrod? Yes. Councilperson Jackson? Uh, yes. <laughs> Councilperson Kathy? Councilperson Nardi? Yes. And Supervisor Zuckerman? Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Again, everyone. Great, great job. Thank, Thank, you. You. Thank you, Camille. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, the next resolution is to award a contract to Brook Productions for Crawford uh, Community Center uh, advertising. Debbie, I think this is yours. I think this is mine. So uh, we uh have needed since the beginning of the pandemic um let me take a step back at the point that the pandemic started our video facility was just coming online our equipment was in and we uh had begun to bring in videographers to be trained on it so that they could uh we had a stable of videographers who would come in and rotate to record our meetings and they needed to be trained about on how to properly handle our equipment. What we needed at that time and did not have was an engineer in charge, someone who would be responsible for understanding what equipment we had, how it needed to be properly uh, cared for. Debbie, Debbie, hold on a second. Are you talking about Adwar? No. This is Brooke? Yes. Okay. Where I'm going with this is we needed a, uh, a, a relationship with a, uh, a consultant or a, um, a 1099 employee who would be responsible uh, for how the, the facility was cared for and maintained. Um, to make sure that any videographers coming in and out were handling the, pro the equipment properly. Um, we didn't have such a person. And uh, what I realized is that the person who was being brought in to do the training um, was terrific. Um, his name is Keith Brook. And um, he was back several times to do training. And um, as it turns out, he's a freelance um, engineer in charge and was available. And uh, we had him in as a trial um, a couple of weeks ago to um, uh, enable a, uh, a renter to use the uh, very expensive audio video equipment that we have in the monitors. Um, that that uh, arrangement worked out quite well, both for us and for him. And so we have agreed that, uh, that rather than my going out and conducting a search um, further, I actually I actually interviewed four different candidates for this position um, that um, our trainer would be the perfect selection. As it turns out, and you mentioned Adwar, Gary, um, Adwar had hired Keith Brook to do our training for us. Okay. So that's Brook Productions. All right. Um any questions? If not, may I have a motion in a second? I'll make a motion. I'll say. Okay. Oh, please call the roll. Mm -hmm. Councilperson Axelrod? Yes. Councilperson Jackson? Yes. Councilperson Jaffe? Yes. Councilperson Nardi? Yes. And Supervisor Zuckerman? Yes. Now we can move on to Adbar. Now, on to Adwar. Adwar is the company that uh, uh, worked with Fred Seifert to design our video uh, uh, videotaping facility at Crawford Mansion Community Center. They are responsible for selecting and installing all of the equipment. They know exactly 
how it is set up. Um, there is a last leg of that journey that has yet to be completed. Um, as you are all aware, we are live streaming on Facebook right now. Um, and that is because we do not have the techno technical facility to uh, be broadcast to um, on the cable channels uh, for Rybrook, Porchester, or the Rhineck portion of the village of Amaranek. That is a facility that we have not re-established since we made the leap to our own um, production. So this uh, contract with Adwar will complete that last leg of the journey. So then our future meetings, they're gonna be broadcast on cable. In other That's words. the idea, yes. Okay. And also when we finally get to meet back at Crawford Management Community Center, we will, we will also be on cable. Okay. We have no idea when we're going back to Crawford though. That's gonna be a while. That, that's up to the governor of the state of New York. Yeah, I know, I know. And I'd nobody wants, to, and I'd right now to, nobody, nobody wants to be around me right now anyway. Uh, <laughs> well, no, we're I'd just happy to see you, Tom. We're yeah. happy to see that's you. Right. We, we, we're all looking forward to getting together, but right now, we got to do what we got to do. No, I understand. All right. So, um, so in truth is I'm hoping that our meetings, these meetings, um, even over Zoom, we'll be able to get that onto local access television the way we were before. Yeah. Um, that's the plan. It's certainly the plan is to uh, make sure that we can do it from Crawford. Yeah. Debbie, that, that is Adwar, do they have the facility to help us multi-stream? I'm only saying as the publicist in the room, cable subs have gone down about, was about um, 25 million homes since 2012. And they're looking at losing another 25 million subs by 2025. So if we could be multi-streaming to social media, so we're still logging on Facebook as well as getting on the local cable access channels, we'll get more eyeballs. I believe that our TriCaster is set up to do just that. Okay. To, to sure be, getting, you know, uh, uh, you know, they say a little knowledge is a dangerous thing. Yeah. <laughs> so that's what I have. I have a little bit of knowledge, but well, it's, it bit seems of, pretty... that little bit is more than mine. <laughs> and my my question would be is that if we approve this, how long would it take for them to get into gear to have it up and running? They're they're ready to go. So um, I'm just, I I would expect that they'll be working in within the next month. Okay. All right. Is there a particular event or, or a date that you have in mind or you just wanted a contact? Just curious. Just okay. curious to how long it would be. All right. I have no 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 mind, you know, date in mind or anything. Yeah. Good. Um with that, may I have a motion and a second for the ad war contract. I'll make a motion. Second? Second. Thank you. Oh, please call the roll. Councilperson Axelrod? Yes. Councilperson Jackson? Yes. Councilperson Jaffe? Yep. Councilperson Nardi? Yes. And Supervisor Zuckerman? Yes, thank you. Uh, the next items are the homestead-based proportions. Denise, uh, you have, don't have confirmation, so we're going to remove those from this agenda. Okay, that's fine. Yeah, I'm checking my emails as we're going along. I haven't heard from John Wollum, so that would okay. be a good thing. We'll, we'll either do it. I don't know if we can wait till next month. We can call a special meeting to approve these. I know the villages need this, especially. Yeah, um, towards the end of the month, they need it. So, um, yeah, that well, would be it's good to do. It's almost the end of the month. So I, I'd like the council to think about a meeting, special meeting next week early uh for the sole purpose of approving uh the homestead based proportions if we need to do that okay, okay we'll pick a date. We'll, we'll we'll wait until uh we get approval from the state and then we will uh we will set the meeting sounds good thank you okay okay the next uh resolution is a tax cert resolution regarding 51 hawthorne uh denise you want to I know this is Dan's case. Do you want to uh, just tell us what this is about? Um, I 
don't know what he's settled at, so I'm... And Dan's not here? No. No. Okay. Uh, um, well, I think that the... I think that base, basically, uh, I know that we've had discussion with the village of Rybrook on this, but if you don't know what exactly what the circumstances are, we'll take this off. The yeah, I don't know what he negotiated, so it'd be best if he okay. could. That's fine. That's okay. fine. We'll just remove it. And the next one and last resolution is reappointing Mark Clapper to the Board of Assessment Review. Uh, Mark has was, uh, I believe, serving the unexpired term of Brian Niles. Is that correct, Denise? Yes. And um, his time, his appointment time is here. In fact, it's a little bit past. This appointment is uh, through September uh, 30th of 2025. And uh, I don't think uh, Mark has done a very good job. Yes, he has. Denise will agree. Mm -hmm. so, Absolutely. Uh, may I have a motion and a second? So moved. Right. Second. Thank you. Is there any, any discussion? If Mark not, is amazing. He's excellent. <coughs> um, Hope, please call the roll. Councilperson Axelrod? Yes. Councilperson Jackson? Yes. Councilperson Jaffe? Yes. Councilperson Nardi? Yes. And Supervisor Zuckerman? Yes. Thank you. That completes our resolution for the evening. Um, we have uh, Camille, while you're still fresh, do you have a revenue report or would you like to consider that as submitted? No, she submitted a revenue report as well. Oh, okay. I can just go through it very quickly. Um, sure. Our revenue year to date, um, it, we have had 34 events uh, with a revenue of almost $6,000, 5,925. Uh, staff wages at 945, uh, which brings us to 16% um, cost of, not cost of, but percentage of revenue to wages. So that is where we definitely want to be. We want to be under 30%. Our net revenue for those 34 events was $4,980. Uh, moving forward for the balance of the year right now, we have roughly 31 events uh, on the calendar. And while not the 12 that we talked about earlier, Tom, there are 11 different uh, nonprofit events in there. Mm -hmm. um, so we have 31 and many more to come. Okay. So. What does it mean patron percentage? Patron percentage? Oh, the category. Is that what you're asking? Yes. Yeah, it's the category. Ah, got it. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Patron category, I should probably make a note of that. Okay, so 3% of our renters are municipal governments. 35% of them are on the, our nonprofits and the rest are Correct. residents or non-residents. So okay. far, yeah, so far. <clears throat> All right, Excellent. thank you, Camille, again. Welcome. Uh, <coughs> the, um, I got, Nick, is that you? Somebody's on the phone there. Nick. I'm here, yes, I'm on the phone. Right. You Nick or Vic? No, Nick, there was some background noise. I thought it might have been in your phone. Uh, do you want to uh, go over the uh, uh, tax report? Do you have a report or just submitting the collections? It's up to you, my friend. Yeah, well, besides the collection, I just want to uh, inform you that we send out close to, or we will, we're working right now, Close to 700 delinquent school taxes. So please, folks, when you get that, make the payment because the schools need this money. And if we don't get the money from you, then the town has to foot it because we guarantee the levy. 
So there's an awful lot of money still out there. Please, everyone, do your best to get the payments up to snuff. Okay? And Nick, why don't you tell the, the viewers and listeners uh, that the school taxes, uh, late payment of school taxes carry considerable penalties. They carry a, a very heavy penalty of 10%. So that can, you know, if, you're, if your tax is $3,500, we'll say your penalty is 350 And in two months, that will go to 11%. The state allows you to have the months of February and March at the 10%, but then begin uh, June 1st, it becomes 11%. So please, everyone, please concentrate on those payments. It's very, very important. Okay, thank you. Yeah, and let, let me just interject one thing. Uh, I know that it is difficult for many people to pay their taxes. Uh, this time of COVID, people are unemployed, but the town has no authorization to forgive taxes. If taxes are to be forgiven or penalties decreased, that'll have to come from the state of New York. Uh, and, and we have no uh, authority whatsoever to, to uh, delay the payment of taxes without interest. So it just no, it's all covered by law. I want to make that very clear. It's not the town being hard on people uh, with hardships. It's the uh, the fact that the law is what it is, and we don't have any authority to change that. Right. Uh, okay. Uh, thank you, Nick. Okay. Uh, let did you pass back. by finances? I don't know if they burned. I did. The... I did bypass finance. <laughs> I did. I can't I, forget. <laughs> I was just going to get to Dave. David, do you have a financial report? Do you have anything to say? Yes. About our receivables? Two things. Um, uh, the receiver, receivables summary was submitted. Two of the uh, nine in rent properties that were in sealed bid closed in January. Dan's trying to schedule the other uh, three that the town received bids on. So uh, we've got a pretty good handle on receivables and the auditors will be in the town next week for the 2020 audit. So they'll be bugging everybody, you know, the tax uh, as usual. <laughs> yeah. So. That's okay. We're trying to keep it okay, Nick. We, we know the books yeah. are in good shape. Thanks, Dave. Okay. And let me just, while, while we're talking about that, um, the receivables, yes, I'm in constant contact with Dan, uh, asking him when I'm going to sign the deed. And uh, the, the, the purchasers, uh, some of them are having difficulty getting their acts together. But we expect that... Uh, that will have closings by the end of this month for the remaining couple of properties. Uh, the uh, town attorney is working on the next class. Uh, Jeff, why don't you just, um, we, we have two separate situations. Some of the properties that went in RAM and put answers in, we are before the court to get the answers stricken and to either sell the property or collect the money. And um, I'm, I'm feeling your thunder, Jeffrey. You should be uh, jumping up and down. And the, the other one is, what about the next in-rem class? Has been, has been brought before the court and has been, has been mailed. Although, you know, this is litigation, so I'm not really at liberty to discuss in public the details, but Everything's in process. We're not asking for details. The, the fact is that the next class of in foreclosures, we've received index numbers. We're in the process of serving uh, the, um, the uh, people who are three years or more, not current, three years or more delinquent in taxes. And um, that's going forward under Jeff's auspices. With me looking over his shoulder, uh, and um, to say in the storm now. What's that? What's that, Dave? Oh, I think that was me. Yeah, 
Okay. Um, next is uh, uh, Jeff. Do you have anything else, uh, town attorney wise? Nothing else to add. Okay. And hope town clerk's report is submitted. It's Jeff, submitted. We'll keep busy. <laughs> oh, one more thing. I just wanted to ask Nick, Nick if he wanted to mention about the Village Roy Brook. Taxes are due this month. Second installment. Is he still there? Well, I'll remind you. Yes, everyone. I'm here. Yes. <laughs> mm -hmm. You should have received a notice that the second installment is due. Coming in very slowly, which is odd, but they are coming in very slowly. So you have an extra day to put it in the lockbox because the, the 28th of February falls on a Sunday. So you can put it in there on Monday and receive no penalties. If, if you do go online, that we get a lot of complaints, we cannot stop that penalty because that's figured into the, the system. So if you're going to pay on the 1st of March, you have to pay the penalty. So keep that in mind. You have to either pay before midnight of the 30th, of the 28th in, the, in this case, or the penalty is automatically added. So please. Okay, thank you. All right, thank you. And with that, um, the business portion of the meeting is over. Uh, I'd like to have a motion to go into executive session to discuss uh, certain contract negotiations. Um, may I have a motion and a second? I'll make the motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we are now in executive session. Okay, and good night. Good night, man. Good night. Good night. Could we take any action or we could, um, most of us could say good night. <laughs> you can say good night. Okay. No so we just need, we, um, I'll be, I'll be, I'll be happy to be administrator. So maybe you can transfer over to me. Transfer the um, credit. Yes, and I, I suggest that we stop recording. Yes, please. Okay, good night all. Good night.